Hi everyone and welcome to the LARP Guide. In this video, I'll be sharing with you my 10 most essential LARP camping tips. If you enjoy this video, please consider becoming a subscriber. And if you have any of your own essential LARP tips for the community, please pop them in the comments below. Also, if you hang around to the end, I'll share with you a bonus tip that could be a game changer. Okay, let's get into it. Number 10, be visible. In most cases, when camping at a LARP event, you'll be camping alongside hundreds of others in the middle of a farmer's field. It is very easy to forget or misplace your tent's location without any major landmarks and everybody's tents looking the same in the dark, making your stand out could be a lifesaver. One of the things I have used is a couple of solar paneled lights placed at the entrance of my tent. They may not be a beacon of Gondor, but when you're looking down a row of tents, spotting a couple of little lights can narrow down your search from hundreds to a couple of potential tents. Plus, they also help you find the tent zipper while your partner wanders off with your only torch to go to the toilet. Number nine, pack like a pro. Gone are the days of packing everything into bags or backpacks, along with gone are the days of throwing everything in the boot of your car and then realizing you still got to try and fit in that six foot spear and massive shield. Buy yourself some plastic storage boxes. They're a game changer. I have one box for my costume, one box for my food, one box for my bedding, and one final box for bits and bobs. They can be stacked too high in the rear of your boot, and then you've got loads of room left to pack everything else, like your tent and, and that bulky set of armor you're wearing. Also, when you're getting ready for the event, we just have to pick up those boxes and place them in the back of the car. And then when you get home, you just take out the things that need washing, wash them, and then stack them up in your loft out of the way. You don't have to worry about finding homes for everything post-event. Boom, LARP prep and packing made simple. Number eight, tent pegs and guy ropes. Buy more tent pegs. Even if you have a brand new tent, get more tent pegs. Make sure they are nice and strong and will stand up to a good clobber from your tent peg mallet. Talking of which, get yourself a tent peg mallet. You will be amazed how important guy ropes are when you're in the middle of the field and the wind starts picking up. There is nothing worse than turning up to the event with not enough or bent up, no good to anyone tent pegs. Also, get yourself some torn high-vis material or some barrier tape. After you've erected your tent and set up your guy ropes, hang some of this from the ropes and wrap some around your pegs. Nothing is worse than waking up as a fellow laugher comes falling over and sitting on you in the middle of the night because they've fallen over one of your guy ropes in the dark. This may have happened to me once or twice before I invested in some barrier tape. Number seven, air beds are amazing. Okay, when it comes to you and a cold hard floor, there are tons of options available to you. You could go all out and get yourself a camping bed, but these are expensive and large. And in my case, always have this annoying metal bar that just seems to dig into my back. You could go for the cheap lightweight roll mat and then realize and wish you'd bought like 12 of them and you can't seem to warm up and also you seem to have pitched your tent on the only patch of jagged rocks in the field. That leaves you with an airbed option, but they always seem to deflate and they take forever using a hand pub to inflate. But you see there's a secret to an airbed. Buy two airbeds and stack them on top of each other. Oh my God, it feels so good sleeping on this throne of a bed. I also purchased a good electric pump. Don't even consider using a foot pump. LARP is already filled with effort. Let's not add any more. Also, no matter how much it seems like a good idea to share your airbed with your partner, don't. When they get up in the middle of the night for the call of nature 
you will get your very own catapult adventure as you're thrown off the airbed. Number six, practice makes perfect. Don't pitch a tent for the first time at the event. As funny as it may be to watch someone in the pissing rain pitching a massive tent with no idea what they're doing, it's a highly stressful and embarrassing moment for them that may put them off ever coming back to LARP again. So first of all, when you get your new tent, give it a pitch on a nice sunny day in the comfort of your own home or at your local park. Look up some YouTube guides and be comfortable with it. That way, when you arrive at the event after a six hour stressful drive, pitching your tent is a rehearsed and comfortable job, not an embarrassing cluster f Also, on a side note, if you see someone struggling pitching their tent, don't just sit there giggling at them. Go and offer them some help. At one of my first LARP events, a random stranger came up and gave me a hand putting away my annoying, what the hell am I doing wrong, pop-up tent. Getting it up was easy. But after 20 minutes in the pissing rain, trying to get this damn thing to fold down, this random act of kindness made my event. Number five, bring a couple of sacks. Okay, hear me out on this one. You may be shocked to find out that it can rain at a LARP event. Sometimes it can even rain a lot. I know, right? Impossible situation. But for something that, let's be honest, makes up a good 50% of LARP weather, we as LARPers don't often plan for the most common thing. Your car getting stuck in the mud on the last day as you're trying to leave. Now, of course, you can request event organizers' assistance or the kindness of a random stranger. But nothing beats whipping out your own emergency, look how well I'm planned, couple of potato sacks. Place these under your drive wheels, the, the back or front, depending on your car, and try pulling away with a little push. You will be amazed how much of a difference these make. And all you have to do afterwards is offer them to a random stranger who's also stuck in the mud and boom, you're a LARP legend. Number four, hot weather or cold weather sleeping bag. Over the years, I have tried out loads of different sleeping arrangements to try and keep myself either cool or warm during the night. And to be honest, it's been a right faff. I came across this fantastic item whilst chatting to a salesman at the local camping shop and I think it's worth a share. Sleeping bag thermal socks. They're an inner sock that you can put inside your sleeping bag as an additional layer normally used when you're traveling in very cold environments. But what I've been doing is buying a summer sleeping bag and then putting these in it if I'm starting to get cold. It makes your sleeping bags adjustable and removes the discomfort of either having packed a cold weather one and then sweating your nuts off or a summer one and you're laying there freezing cold. They are also incredibly cheap. Number three, bring some earplugs. There's nothing worse than coming back to your tent on your first night to the sounds of buzz saws going off around you. Yep. You've pitched your tent right next to some snorers. It's incredibly common. And considering you're only ever going to be like five feet away from them with a thin layer of material, it can be incredibly loud. So as Scar once said from The Lion King, be prepared. And just pack yourself some earplugs. Just for the record, it is not okay to go banging on their tent and demanding they stop snoring. Number two, use your car. When things start to go downhill and you can't keep yourself warm or the wind is blowing your tent all over the place, don't be afraid to abandon ship and jump in your car. It may not be as comfortable, but it offers loads of protection. Just don't forget to crack a window to give yourself some airflow. Oh. And please don't, unless you really have to, turn it on. The fumes and the noise could cause someone else who's camped near to you to have an even rougher night. Number one, be kind. 
if you see someone has forgotten their tent pegs and you have some spare, please consider loaning yours out. If you see someone using a hand pump and you have an electric pump, please consider letting them use yours. If someone is stuck, give them a hand. Be that amazing stranger that makes someone's event. We're all there to have fun and share in this amazing community built hobby. You can have such a massive impact on someone's LARP experience and become a story that they tell everyone. I won't ever forget the time I came back to my tent and someone had added some tent pegs and reattached my guy ropes in the middle of a very stormy and windy event. I will never know who did this. But someone saw my tent was in trouble and helped me without me even being there to say thank you. So to whoever it was, thank you for saving my tent. You're my campfire legend. Before I get into the bonus tip, if you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please consider subscribing to the channel and becoming a Patreon member as well. The link to this can be found in the description below. Okay, my bonus tip. Rent or use a van. Something that changed my LARP camping experience from camping to glamping overnight was when I used my partner's van. We bought a little fold-out mattress that we put in the rear of the van, along with, of course, our plastic boxes and kit. Then, when we arrived at the event, we moved our boxes into the front seat and pulled out the mattress, which cost us, I think, around £30. That was it. Our campsite was ready. We got our kit on and we went into the game. No tent set up, no worry about weathers. We even had some electrical fans and a portable DVD player. Even though we don't have the van anymore, I would be very tempted to hire one before going to my next LARP event. So that covers it. I hope you have found this video useful. And I love you all and see you soon. Bye.